Okay, I did not record my class today and I needed to for our first lesson, so I'm just going to kind of go over the cliff notes. It wasn't real uh, intense work today. The kids had this uh, for notes, and so what you see that they have here is they're given an equation, a linear equation. This one is y equals 2x plus 7, and we just want to get them to develop the habit of evaluating a linear function. So I gave them some x values, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, and they had to work on coming up with the output values. And then from there, so here's our equation. I showed that you plug in that negative 1 where the x was, and then the, we used our calculators to get the answer, and you get an input of negative 1 with an output of 5. And basically, we're generating the same thing as what a T-chart is for 8th grade. I just wanted to show them how to plug in with a little bit of scratch work here to um, uh, help them learn and get more comfortable using their calculators with these calculators because they'll always be able to use their calculator. And then from here, once we've generated these points, so they plugged in 8 and 1, they plugged in 0, they plugged in 1 and 2, and then they get the output values. And as you can see, these y values, these outputs, are all increasing by 2, 5, 7, 9, 11. And when we're determining the slope, the, that common difference in the y values over the common difference in the x values is uh, what gives you the slope. So the y's are going up by 2. The x values, you'll notice from negative 1 to 0 to 1 to 2, they're increasing by 1. So that's 2 over 1, or 2, and that's going to be the slope. So we're studying the slope. We're studying plugging in x values to get y values. And then we also want to look at the graphical representation. So we, we plotted these dots. Now the 11 did go a little bit off of the chart. And then we uh, graph, the, graph them, connect these dots, because we're not doing a sequence. Uh, I think that's about right. And then they need to draw arrows because they go forever. They're not, they don't have a, an ending. And so next we know, you can see the slope is two. I wanted them to see it visually. There's a two and there's a one. There's a two and there's a one, a two and a one. So the two and the one, which happened with the y's and the x's, is also a visual representation there. And all these things connect together. Lastly, we determined that the y-intercept, we revisited that definition from the previous unit. It's where it crosses the y-axis. Here it is at 0, 7. And part of that definition for y-intercept is that the x value is 0. We did another real similar type question. This time it was not, it was in a messy format. You know, it's not y equals a, a something. We have 6x minus 14 equals 2y. And so what we did is we found out what the 6x minus 14 was. We plug in the negative one, we get that number. And really what they had was, uh, it was negative 20 equals 2y. Or negative 20 is exactly double what y is. So then I said, well, what's y? Then we talked about that. I said, well, what, what could you do there? And then we talked about dividing by 2. So each time we did these calculations, we started to include this divide by 2. We just talked it through. We didn't get real technical with it. But they used their calculator. Let me see if you can see it over here. A little bit you can see it over there. Um, on their calculator, above the 7 key, above the x to the negative 1 or x to the first key, and above the sign symbol is this N over D button. And they hit that button and then they can type this stuff in on their calculator and it'll automatically simplify it and get these results. So the plug-in point was still where X was. We plugged in negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. And we get these outputs. We did the same thing. They plotted these points. Uh, X is the left and right. So you go left one and then down 10, and we did that. And then they went zero, down seven. That's also our y-intercept. And then we plotted the points, and then we connected the dots. We did the change in the y's is three, the change in the x's that were increasing by one. Together, they make a positive three over one or three slope. And um, then we talked about the visual representation, three and one, three and one. And we did the same kind of thing over here. For this last example, I had kids plot the points. Uh, the slope on this one is trending downwards, so you get negative 3, 
Uh, we did the same thing that divide by 12, so we built this fraction, they did that scratch work, they plugged in these x values, get these y values, and the change in the y was down two, the change in the x's was plus three. We, instead of doing the actual slope equation, we just do the common differences and the common differences, and then together, you get negative two over three and reduce, that's still just negative two over three. So you can see the two and the three here, See it visually, they go to find the intercept. It's also where this zero is here. So we have our, our y-intercept is located right there. And it's located right there on the graph. Lastly, I had the students work out this final problem. They had to bring it to me and show me. And then I would give them their worksheet. The slope here was negative, I think it was negative four over five. I'm going kind of from memory here. And they had to graph it and do this one by themselves. And after that, they got the worksheet. And if they finished their worksheet, then they were able to have their uh, technology out and relax for the final 10, 15 minutes. Some of them had to work through the bell, but there's a matching worksheet to go with this. You can check at home if you would like to see if your child completed the matching worksheet. I think I, I, I tried to get everybody to show me that they finished this problem before the bell. But they should have had probably you know, at least 30 40 minutes to finish the other worksheet, which had four matching problems. So they, they should have completed that in time if they were being diligent. Thank you.